Welcome to VidBuild. We are going to dive into the inner workings of the VidBuild process to understand how it bundles and optimizes your application for production. First, a bit about me. I am Matias Capeleto, also known as Patak. I am a Vid core team member and a Vitesse core team member, which is a new Vid native chess alternative. I am also a Vue team member and I now join the Stacklist team to work full time on Vid and its ecosystem. So, why Vid? When talking about Vid, we normally focus on its dev server. Vid doesn't bundle your app during dev, so the server starts instantly. We transform your modules on demand over native ESM as the browser requests them. And doing so, it offers light and fast hot module replacement that stay fast regardless of the app size. You also get out of the box support for TypeScript, JSX, PostCSS, CSS modules, and more, and a powerful Relab based plugin API to extend it, for example, to use Vue single file components or other frameworks. But this is half of the story. Vit also shines when building your application for production, and this will be the focus of the talk. First, let's try it out. You can go to vid.new slash view in your browser, and this will open a Stacklitz playground that is going to fork the view starter in the vid repo. You can see that we can play with the application before we can finish explaining what is going on. Stacklitz is running Node in the browser using web containers, giving us a experience that is almost the same as our local environment. The install size of it is really small, so the install went really fast. Um, from there, the Vit server started right away as there is no need for bundle your application. The browser requested the index HTML, encounter a script type module, and kept requesting the modules of your application. We can go to this first module and you can see that there is an import for app.view. This is a view single file component and the browser doesn't know how to process it. But in the vidconfig.js, we have configured the plugin vid.js plugin view. And this lets vid understand single file components and give the browser the JS and CSS that it understand. Let's go to hello world.view and modify it so we can see hot model replacement kick in. Let's change also some colors here. And you can see that as soon as we save, the change is reproduced instantly on the other side. The count is also maintained, the state is preserved. And this fast feedback loop is almost the same as the one you get when modifying something with the browser dev tools. And it's incredible to work like this during development. Let's close now the dev server. And when you're really ready to deploy your application, you use feed build to bundle your app for production. VidBuild uses internally Rollup to bundle all the assets of your application. By default, they are in the dist folder. Here you can see in the assets that an index.js was generated and then is now optimized and minified. And the same for the CSS. The same for goes for an image that was imported and a vendor chunk was split it by default. In the output index HTML, we can see that we are now importing the index script. And this script is going to import the vendor chunk. So to ab avoid the loading waterfall, we are preloading it here right away. And we are also linking the CSS style sheet. All these files are hashed. So they can be strongly cached in the browser. If we want to check 
the bundled application, we can call vid preview, that is going to load in localhost directly the application to, to play with. And this is not using the vid dev server, but directly the optimized application. Okay, let's move on. So, vid at build time is an opinionated rollup setup. It gives you good default for the most common cases and configures rollup with feature plugins like support for post CSS, JSON imports, WASM, workers, and ads plugin to optimize your code like minification using ES build, code splitting, assets preloading, etc. The build process starts with the index HTML entry point, as we saw, which is parsed to extract the scripts and linked CSS or inline style sheets. The script tags or imports could point to TypeScript files or other file types, as long as Vit knows how to transpile them or it is, it is extended with user plugins to deal with them, as we saw with the view plugin. The same goes with the CSS, both link it or inline it, they will be extracted and processed by the pipeline. Once the JS and CSS assets are processed by the pipeline and bundled, it, then each chunk is minified and we have to replace the original script and link tags with them to create the output index HTML file for our app. As we saw, Vit hashes these files, allowing a strong caching in the browser. And also a vendor chunk is being generated and preloaded. The same goes for CSS styles that will be bundled and optimized accordingly. Vit supports code splitting, both for JS and CSS assets also by default, when a dynamic import is encountered, an async.js chunk and a CSS chunk are generated for it. The import call is then instrumented in the importer chunk to preload its dependencies and wait for the corresponding CSS style sheet. Other assets like images, videos, wasm that are imported are also processed by the build pipeline. Let's go through the internal plugins pipeline to get a glimpse on what Vit does during build. The Rollup plugins API allows Vit to support most out-of-the-box features and optimization as independent plugins. Vit uses an extended version of this plugin API that works both in dev and build, introducing new Vit-specific hooks for example, to extend the dev server or augment the hot module replacement boundaries. Most plugins from the Rollup ecosystem are compatible with Vid. During build, we are dealing with standard Rollup plugins, since the Vid dev server is not on the table. The most typical hooks that you will encounter when you are creating one are resolved by D, which lets you resolve an import path. For example, we need to resolve package names to its location in node modules. The load hook lets us get the code for a certain ID and is useful to implement virtual modules, for example. These are modules that doesn't exist in the file system, but we load them on the fly. We generate the code for them on the fly. The transform hook gives us the opportunity to transpile the code of a module, for example, to strip the types, info, or compile JSX. And with the render chunk hook, we can transpile each bundle chunk, for example, minifying it with ESBuild. The first plugin in the pipeline is the alias plugin. And this is the official Rolla plugin alias, and that, as we saw, the most Rollup plugins are compatible, and several of them are used directly in the internal pipeline of Vit. 
This plugin lets user configure a map of aliases so common import paths can be more manageable. A good use case for the resolve ID hook. For example, like if there is a components alias that is resolved to this folder, the user will be able to write an import no matter where it is in the, in the folder tree, always as a slash components slash Vuton.view and the plugin alias is going to transpile it to the proper location. Then we have the user play pre plugins. This is the first batch of user plugins. In Vit, there is a single list of plugins, but an enforced flag. Let's user decide where this plugin should be inserted in the pipeline. The Vit Resolve plugin implements the resolution logic for path, like node package resolution. The Vit CSS plugin gives us support for CSS modules, post CSS, and other CSS preprocessors. The Vit ES build plugin transpiles JSS sources, stripping types, and compiling JSX using ES build. Then we have a few Vit JSON, Vit Wasm, and Vit Worker. These, these are feature plugins that give us support for common patterns, like importing a JSON file as an object. Here we can see that we can even import a root field of the JSON as a name and export. And this helps with tree shaking. Then we have the Vit Asset plugin that implements the handling for imported assets. For example, an image can be imported, resulted in an URL that can be used as is in the app code. And Vit will encode the image as a base64 URL below a configurable cell size limit as an optimization out of the box. We then have the Vit CSS Post plugin that uses ES build to minify CSS. And it plays a role in transforming dynamic import so its related CSS is preloaded when the corresponding JS async chunk is requested. As we said, that a dynamic import is instrumented, so the related assets are preloaded when this is going to be imported. And this is also an optimization that you get out of the box. The Vit build HTML plugin process the HTML entry points replacing the scripts and style sheet with their bundled and optimized version as we saw before. There are a few plugins that allows handling of dynamic imports, import meta URL and glob imports. For example, import meta glob let us import a set of modules from the file system using a glob pattern. And this syntax is supported by the Vit Build Import Analysis plugin, which expanded as a list of regular imports. So we can see that here we are requesting all the shares file in the dir folder. And this is going to be transpiled by the Build Import Analysis plugin into a expanded list with each dynamic import for all the files that are in that folder at build time. The Vit ES build transpile plugin leverage ES build to compile JS to the configured targets and minify the bundle code. A few minor versions ago, Vit used tarser for minification by default. 
but once ESV minification became mature enough, it was switched as a default, greatly speeding up the build process. And this is also important in the philosophy of Vit, because Vit will use the best tool that is available at the time and will switch internal tools as the, the ecosystem evolves. The Vit manifest and Vit SSR manifest plugins allows projects to generate metadata about the generated chunks that can be used to integrate Vit with other tools like Rails or Laravel. For example, the Vit manifest plugin generates a manifest.json file that contains a mapping of non-hashed asset file names to their hashed versions, which can then be used by a server framework to render the correct asset links. And this is the complete build pipeline of plugins. And you can see that there are quite a few of them. If we will use plain rollup, we will have to configure it with an equivalent pipeline if we want to support all the features and optimization that Bit offers. We can see that even without the Bit dev server on the table, Bit has a lot of value as an, as an opinionated and complete build tool because you get this out of the box. So Vit is also an extendable toolkit to craft modern framework. There is a complete JavaScript API. As we saw, there is instant feedback loop during dev, serving and bundled ESM modules, out-of-the-box support for TypeScript, JSX, CSS module, PostCSS, and more. So frameworks don't need to care about how to support this. There is a flexible plugin system tapping into and augmenting the rollup ecosystem. And this also lets framework use the plugins that all the ecosystem is working on and also develop their own for their specific needs. There is a shared low-level SSR API that they can share and out-of-the-box support for optimized build, as we saw, using Rollup. And if needed, there can be support for all browsers using VJS plugin legacy. So this ended up in an explosion of projects using Vit. First, the Vit core team maintains plugins for Vue and React. And the teams of Svelte, Preact, Solid, Marco, between other UI frameworks, provide Polish's official plugin for each of them. There is also a vibrant ecosystem of plugins, and a complete list is maintained at Awesome Vit. You can get plugins for PWA or even to help in debugging. And a big part of Vit success is due to it being chosen by modern app frameworks like Svelkit, Nax3, Hydrogen, Astro, Solid Start, just to name a few. And that is all. You can continue digging deeper into how Vit build is implemented at patak.dev slash vit slash build.html. And you have the documentation at vjs.dev, our vid core repo, and the Discord chat at chat.vjs.dev, and the Twitter handle is vid.js uh, also. And if you are interested in build tools and DX, you should join the vid community and collaborate with us. We have a very welcoming community and a lot of collaborators working together to improve a bit core.